All right, so we picked up this uh, Scott's manufactured by John Deere tractor for uh, the good old price of free, thanks to our good friend Dan. It is a GX1642S14542, which is the serial number, and there's a bunch of other crap there. Uh, it is 42 inch deck with a 16 horsepower Kohler Command. So we just picked it up and we're going to give it a good cleaning. Alright, so we washed it off, got it all cleaned up, now we're going to do a tricky oil change and see what the oil looks like. Came out pretty squeaky clean, a little bit more rinsing to do. Alright, so we got everything all cleaned up, we got the oil filter off, the oil drained. They include this kind of cool little drain thing here where you just pull this out, hook up a tube, and the oil just spews right out. Uh, we're going to go to the hardware store see if we can find a new spark plug, uh, an air filter, and oil filter. And there's really not much else this thing seems to need. It's in really good shape. And it is a Kohler CV16S, spec number 43526. All right, now this thing didn't come with a fuel shutoff valve, but I like to install these in all the equipment that I have. Fuel shutoff valve is right here. You can get these on Amazon. You'll need one of these quarter inch fuel line clips, and then one of these two, same thing. Uh, what this allows you to do, this is a gravity fed system. This allows you to cut off gas from the tank to the carburetor. Because what can happen is that if that uh, the float valve in the fuel bowl ever gets stuck open for whatever reason, the whole tank can drain into the crankcase and dilute the oil and can essentially ruin the engine if you're not careful and you don't notice it in time. So what I do is I install one of these valves. Every time I'm done using it, I turn the valve from the on position to the off position and that'll, that'll prevent fuel from draining from the tank into the crankcase. That's a you know, three or five dollar fix. Very easy. And so far all we've really done with this thing is we've cleaned it up with some simple green in the garden hose. Uh, changed the oil, got a new filter from, uh, from Lowe's, put some 10W30 in there, just kind of cleaned it off. We blew out the air filter, uh, have a new one on order. I've ordered some new belts. The belts on this mower are trashed completely. There are sections missing. Um, don't need to adjust the valves in this engine. It's hydraulic valve lifters, as it says on the label right there. So no need to do any of that. Uh, some of the safety equipment does need to be adjusted. It's kind of a pain in the neck to start. You have to do something with this little lever here to start it. You can't get up at all while it's running, even if it's not in gear and the blades aren't running, which is kind of silly. Um, we'll probably have to replace some of these tires. I know that front one there has a hole in it that leaks. I'm going to price them out and see what they cost. I'm going to order new blades as well. These blades look like Oregon Gator blades, but they're completely trashed. Even if I sharpen them, they probably won't balance out that well. Um, really the highlight of this machine is the engine. Those of you that know this type of equipment know that that's a very, very good engine. I don't think they make this one anymore. They make the Command, but not the Command uh, single cylinder engines. So uh, I think we're gonna call it a day at this point. Uh, oh, and I did tighten some of the nuts and bolts in the steering linkage. A lot of those were loose. We'll be replacing that tire, obviously. There's almost no tread left. Um, but yeah, that's it so far. All right, so we uh, got some parts for the tractor. I got two new front tires and um, new bushings for the front wheels. I think that might be why this wheel is wearing so weird, so weird this tire, rather. So we're gonna install new bushings on the front wheels. Got two new blades. These are Oregon Gators. And got two new belts. Uh, one to drive the deck and one to drive the transmission in the back, the hydrostatic transmission. I've had really good luck with these Blade Runner belts in a commercial setting. Um, they last a lot longer than standard belts. They're designed for lawn and guarding to duty, so I highly recommend these. So we'll uh, get ready and we'll install all this stuff. That belt part number appears to be the correct part number for the blade drive. However, though Gates's application guide says this will work on the tractor, there's no way, it's way too short. Uh, this belt on the label says it's uh, 59 and a half inches long. 
but if you look up the actual OEM part number, it's 96 inches long, so there's no way this will work. However, notice this has a BR suffix. You take off the BR suffix, the gate's 6896 without the BR, so not a Blade Runner belt, uh, does appear to be the correct uh, size. So maybe there's just a small error in Gates' application chart. So again, it appears that the correct belt for this tractor for the transmission is a S Gates 6896, not a 6896 BR. All right, so in the meantime, I got the, the front of the mower up on jack stands, just used an automotive floor jack to do that. That'll give us a little bit more room to work. And you can see, just looking at it visually, that uh, that wheel's a little bit off camber there compared to the other one. So just looking at the spindles, there's a, there's a little bit of play in that one. There's a lot more in this one. So I suspect that that bushing is worn on that wheel, which is one of the reasons we're changing it. All right, so I've decided to tackle the belt, the mower deck drive belt first. So I just slip the belt off the crank pulley there. And we can see how the belt is routed. So it comes back around this pulley, that pulley, another idler, another one in the far back, and around that other spindle. So it looks like we'll have to take off some screws on the deck. I'm sorry, some guards on the deck. And it feels like maybe a 3 8 or a 10 millimeter. So uh, let's get some tools and tackle that. All right, so it is a 10 millimeter, and there's a guard right there next to that spindle. So I'm just gonna take that nut off. Sorry, I meant bolt um, down in there. This is why we're replacing the belt. You can see that there's big chunks of it missing. It's generally not in good shape. And this is not a, uh, does not appear to be a lawn and guarded rated belt either. So the new belt should perform quite a bit better. Moving over to the other side, we're going to take that guard off. It looks like there's three 13 millimeter nuts. And the guard's off, see a good bit of grass build up around the spindle. Always good to keep this area clean. So that just slips off there. We'll blow this off with the blower. It looks like there's a couple of devices or guards that hold the belt on the idlers so we'll probably have to take the idlers off to get the belt off entirely and it looks like there's a nut on top of that idler there and another one there all right so this nut on this idler here is a 13 there we go the other one's quite a bit bigger let's see what that one is that one comes off pretty easy though that with the bolt and we just got to figure out what this one is over here that feels a lot bigger this other one appears to be a 15 I don't know why they put different size bolts on everything It'd be nice if they kept it all the same so let's see if we can crack this open ready tidy lefty loosey right loose now oh, the nut in the bottom is spinning well actually the nuts on the bottom the bolt is on the top interesting right. so that I lures off with the spacer. Always good to check your idler belt, or your idler condition while you're in here too. Sometimes these things go bad. Oh, there's another one back here. That one's a 13 as well. This one's springboard. 
not gonna bend anything here. Interesting contraption. Let's get a screwdriver to wedge in there. Last thing we have to remove. Just organizing some of the parts I took off of here so we remember how things went back together. Keeping all the nuts and bolts together. Alright, so this idler should be off now. It's bolt. Whoops, just dropped. Now, where'd it go? Can you see it? Got it. So I'll check these idlers in a little bit just to make sure they're in good shape. I don't feel any obvious problems, but sometimes they get a little sloppy and it's hard to tell. All right, so our belt is free. Hopefully, that belt that we bought is the right one. Good Gates' application guide be wrong twice. And get a little bit closer look in the light. This is why we're replacing this belt. Might be original. So. Big chunks missing, not in the greatest of shape. Old belt and new belt side by side looks like a pretty close match to me. I think we'll run with it. Again, that's a, a Gates 6848BR Blade Runner. While we're in here, I'm just gonna clean up some of these rusty spots with a DA and just hit it with some primer and a little bit of paint. We're not going for showroom quality here, just something to protect it from rusting through, which is bad. So I'm gonna use this dual action sander with some 220 grit sandpaper just to even that out a little bit and get the surface rust off. All right, I hit it with a little bit of primer, and again, we're not going for a showroom finish here, we're just going for corrosion protection. So I got rid of all the obvious rust and uh, most of the loose paint and um, just hit it with some automotive primer, let that dry. All right, so we got the new belt in. Installation is just the reverse of removal. Get it wrapped around all the pulleys the same way. All the pulleys are in the same position. That's kind of important. It's got to it's got to go around all the guards. So I think we got that. I might leave this guard off. I'm not a big fan of these guards that cover the the spindles and allow dirt to collect. Um, I left the the nuts and the idlers loose, so I'm going to tighten those now. All right, all the nuts or bolts are tight. You can complete this whole job with a 10 millimeter socket, a 13 millimeter socket. A 15 millimeter socket, a uh, small extension, and a ratchet. So it's pretty easy to do. Start to finish shouldn't take you more than 20, 30 minutes. So um, I ordered another belt for the transmission that's obviously not here yet. So uh, I left that belt there just kind of loosely connected because that's going to have to come off to, to get the uh, transmission belt off. And the transmission belt looks like a lot of fun to get to. Look, really looking forward to that. So I think while we're here, we'll uh, get the old blades off. All right, so the blades are held on by 14 millimeter bolts that's kind of what things look like right now i'm sure if you guys can see that so i guess there's one spindle one blade and there's another one over there so we'll just buzz those off with the impact gun the good old ingersoll rand Old and new blades side by side, so, I mean, maybe these blades were salvageable, but, I mean, they gotta come off to, to fix this anyway. You can see the nice serrations in the blade. So, blades are cheap. So, these are Oregon Gator blades. It's a part number is 96-340. I'll put all this stuff in the description. And what I like to do when I swap blades on a dual 
blade deck is to make sure they're the same length. Don't want the blades hitting each other. So these are pretty darn close. We'll check the center. We'll set, check the the, uh, the clearance at the longest area before we start it up just to make sure. Let's bolt this back on. All right, new blade is on. Get just some light so you can see that. There we go. Now, where the bolt attaches to the hub, there's a, it's not a spacer, but it's a, a dowel almost that fits inside that hole. So make sure that the blade is in that, is located on that dowel, otherwise it'll be off center and it'll shake like crazy. Okay, onto this side, exactly the same as the other one. No different. Let's take the blade, take it off. Using some light. You can kind of see that locating dowel right there on the hub. So you want to make sure the blade fits right in there. Now for illustration purposes, I, I showed you, I'm going to put this together how you don't want to put it together. Notice the space between the blade and the hub? That's not good. You, if you look carefully, you'll, you'll also see the blade is not level. That's what you don't want to do. You want there to be no, no clearance between the blade and the hub. Notice the difference there. There is no gap between the blade and the hub. It's flush up against. That's how you want it. Let's put both blades at their longest point. Let's test the clearance, make sure they'll clear each other. Okay, we got the blades tip to tip. And you'll see that they do clear each other. They do not touch. That's what you want. Probably should have mentioned you do still have to adjust the belt tension. There's a an adjuster nut somewhere in here. I saw it before. Let's put the deck back down. Yeah, this rod right here looks like you uh, can adjust the belt tension on that rod right there by changing the position on that threaded rod. Pretty straightforward. All right, guys. So um, adjusting. The blade belt tension is a little bit more involved than I had originally thought. So what I did first is I loosened this lock nut here, the 16 millimeter socket, which I never use, seemed to do the trick. You gotta engage the PTO. And then measure the distance between, of course there's almost no clearance of room to work measure the distance between this bracket here and this washer right next to it and that distance has to be 0.78 between 0.78 inches and 0.90 inches so we're out of spec I think we're over an inch so to adjust it you have to disconnect this bracket here from the arm and to do that you have to pull out a cotter pin. This I'm making a mess. I'm sure you guys can't see a thing and I apologize. Alright, so I got the pin out. Whoops, I had me drop some. What did we drop? Probably a washer. You guys see it? Oh, oh here it is. I got it. And it says we have to turn this on the rod to adjust it. So we'll do that until we're back in the spec. All right, now we're going to replace the tires and the wheel bearings. Set you guys over here. So first this dust cap has to come off. So it'll probably break pretty brittle. So we have to Just drying it off with a screwdriver.
shark tap looks like. Probably order some more of those. This is what things look like in there. We have to take that equip. Big glove up. Gloves. This clip off. Let's see, is there anything to grab on there? Didn't look like it. Let's grab a pick. Nice and greasy. That's what that looks like. There's a washer. The wheel should just come right off now. And it does. There should be a washer in the back. Maybe. Ooh, it's a nice groove worn in that. That's not good. Oh boy. It's not good fun. So, due to lack of maintenance, you probably see there's a nice oh, clean the grease off. It's pretty bad. Pretty big groove worn right here. You can see it better from this side. Right here and here. I'm not sure if this assembly can be replaced or not. too. Yuck. I'm sure the other side's worse. That tire is wearing worse. Let's check out the parts list to see if uh, this part's available separately. Alright, so I got the old tires off the wheels. These are a couple of tire irons. You can pick these up at Harbor Freight Tools for a couple of dollars. They're pretty good. Um, couldn't use my tire changer because um, this piece right here wouldn't fit through where the axle shaft goes. So I just kind of muscled it, broke the bead with the bead breaker and the tire changer. And then just use these to muscle off the tires. Soapy water helps a lot. Um, so I got the, some of that ready so I can put the uh, tires back on. But I had, can't put the tire on this one because, again, the tire belt was busted. So waiting for that to arrive. All right, so I got one tire replaced, and I also installed new wheel bushings there and greased them up real well. Um, doing that, um, just because these are a bit worn, the tires, as you saw before, were, were not wearing evenly. It's because of the axle, but there's nothing I can do about that short of spending 300 bucks. So to get the bearings out, these bushings, you can get them online, they're pretty cheap. This uh, from Rotary, part number is 0913359. Um, and really what you do is just smack them out with a hammer and smack the new ones in. So let's start off with a screwdriver and a hammer. Where's my screwdriver? 
the favorite one that I was using for this. Where'd it go? All right, I found my screwdriver. Take note of where the grease zerk is. Do not smack too tightly against that side. You'll damage the hole for the, the grease zerk. I'm gonna smack here, here, and here. You wanna avoid that. And so I'm gonna keep the grease zerk up. So I'm going to avoid striking like this. So that will damage that hole. So I'm just gonna kind of keep the screwdriver at an angle and just whack it with a hammer till it falls out. All right, so once you got one side out, uh, just flip the wheel over, get a socket and a half inch extension, which is banging it out from the other side. You might need to, you need to get a kind of a small socket so you don't, again, damage that grease fitting. I'm going to use a, let's see, this looks like a 11 16 so just like that and just whack well on until it comes out. All right, so it came out. Um, maybe three good blows with the hammer, that's all it took. Obviously clean off your tools, you don't want to put them away dirty. If I had the ultrasonic cleaner out, I'd be throwing all this stuff in the ultrasonic cleaner. But that's all put away. Okay. This is what the old bushings look like, nice and dirty. All right, so we'll install the new bushings. Take them out of the bag. We'll just stick one in that hole, we'll whack it over the head. Before you drive it home, you notice there's a notch in this bushing right here. That notch should go to the side where the grease fitting is. This should fly. So about like that. We'll grab our socket and extension, which we just put away because we thought we were done with them. And we will drive them home with a couple good hammer blows. So, just like that. Okay, three or four good, four good hammer blows, you drive it flush, flip it over and do the other side. Okay, so we got new bushings on both sides. Now, you want to put it on the spindle, the worn one of that, and just test fit it. Sometimes there are spacer bushings behind here that you need to take out for the to be able to get the snap ring on. So let's try and see how it fits. Okay, so we probably need a spacer on this side that's actually a little spaced it a little too far. Uh, I had some laying around. Where did I put them? Oh, let me find them. All right, here we go. These, ba these bad boys, actually three of these came off of this side here. And uh, three of these were too thick to get that wheel back on, so I took two of them out. And if you'll see on this side, there's a little bit too much clearance. So when we look at put this wheel on, just dry fit it. see here it's just a little bit too much space so I'm gonna put one washer behind there so that this will fit nicely in the groove and there won't be much of a gap all right so with one washer that looks just about perfect so I'll put the e-clip back in put air in this tire where's the screwdriver two-handed operation can't forget to apply grease. I grease both sides really well, so we hopefully that failure doesn't progress too quickly. That failure being the, the grooves and the spindles. But again, that axle is one piece, it's 300 bucks. It's silly to spend $300 on a tractor that's so old and it's not worth it. I mean, the tractor is probably a thousand dollar tractor brand new, so why spend 300 on an axle? So it's kind of a patch job, but it should last quite a while. All right, so I got both front tires uh, aired up and greased. I'm going to check the pressure with the tires on the ground, obviously. Um, i to put those dust covers back on the front to keep uh, crap out of the wheels. These things. 